Hello, this is Caitlin Cameron with Life Science Washington TV, here to talk with Jane Buckner, MD, who is the president of the Benaroya Research Institute at Virginia Mason. So Jane, tell us a little bit about the Institute and what you're doing there. Um, yeah, so Benaroya Research Institute is a small nonprofit institute focused on studying human immune diseases, particularly autoimmune diseases, has been our focus. We are about 300 scientists, and we're all of us focused from the basic research all the way to clinical trials focusing on these immune diseases. Wonderful. And tell us a little bit about where you're going with that. So over the years, we've been um, expanding our interest beyond type 1 diabetes to add other autoimmune diseases because we think we can actually learn more by studying across diseases. Mm -hmm. So one of our goals is to keep looking for those commonalities. And in fact, one of the areas we've now branched into is allergy, because what we've found is the tools we use in autoimmunity, we can apply to allergy, mm -hmm. and it can teach us a great deal about both types of diseases. So that's one of our goals. Wow, that's great new things and what else are you expanding into because I know there's a lot going on over there. Yeah, so you know we've had great bench research over the years, outstanding clinical trials and, and part of my mission has always been to do translational research, mm -hmm. to interact with the patients, the physicians and the scientists so we really get the whole picture. One of the things that everyone's becoming aware of in science is that we're now generating huge data sets. So one of the areas we're expanding into is systems immunology. Uh -huh. bringing in those computational biologists to help those of us who are just regular old scientists understand this big data. And that's been a really exciting area for us and we have an, a growing group there. Yeah, wow. So tell me a little bit about when patients benefit from all of these various projects that you have going on. Yeah, so there's several ways patients benefit. The, the first thing is we're trying to develop biomarkers that will help us predict disease development mm -hmm. and also predict if they'll respond to therapies or not. Mm -hmm. um, patients are donating samples to our biorepository and we study those samples. Now we don't go back to the patient if it's a research-based study, but they're helping us get to those biomarkers. Our goal is to treat people at the right time with the right drug and we think a lot of our work's gonna drive to that. We also have clinical trials that are ongoing, so patients can participate in some of our clinical trials that include not only treating active disease, but prevention trials. Mm -hmm. And Jane, I know you're relatively new in this position. What are your specific goals as you come into this new job? Yeah, so coming in, we've been uh, doing this type of work for 30 years under the leadership of Jerry Nippon. Mm -hmm. um, the institution's been fabulous. I've been there 20 years. so. Mm -hmm. um, it's been going well. My goal is to keep in the same direction, but to know that we have to be able to incorporate new things and new areas and new tools. So my goal is to keep us on top of things moving forward. And one of the areas we've become very interested in is not just looking at samples from patients, but actually doing studies with patients receiving therapy so we can go back to the bench and study those yeah. and understand how these treatments work. Fantastic. So today you are going to be honored as an outstanding woman in life sciences. Tell us a little about the achievements that brought you to this honor. Yeah, well, I feel very fortunate uh, to be given this honor, certainly. Um, you know, the area that I feel I've really been able to contribute the most in is that I've chosen this path to do translational research. And that's uh, principally because I'm a physician. And so my goal is to learn from my patients to understand their diseases. And so one of the tough things about doing uh, human immunology is that people are very different and it means your data is more scattered. So what we've tried to do over the years is develop a program that integrates patients, physicians, and scientists, uses samples from a tissue registry and biorepository mm -hmm. to ask those questions. Mm -hmm. And I think by doing that well and meticulously, I've been able to convince other scientists <laughs> that you can actually do this. And so yeah. that's been a really important part of my, my life's work. Yeah, fantastic. That's great. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with all the rest of us here? You know, I, the thing I'm very excited about being part of uh, Life Science Northwest, um, because one of the other things we do at BRI is that we're very collaborative. Mm -hmm. And not only do we collaborate with um, physicians and scientists uh, in the Seattle area, but we also do a lot of work with uh, companies developing new therapies and new tests. And so this is an opportunity for us to do that, to interact here at Life yeah. Science Northwest. Wonderful, wonderful, thank you. So this is Caitlin Cameron here with Life Sciences TV at Life Sciences Innovation Northwest. Thank you.